When life first appeared on Earth, the surface conditions were nothing like an idyllic paradise. The temperatures were like hell itself. The first settlers, however, evolved at ease in this environment. And today, three and a half billion years later, the environment in many regions continues to be almost as hostile as in those days. In the Antarctic, the temperatures occasionally drop to minus 80 degrees Celsius, while in the Sahara Desert, the thermometer can rise above 60 degrees Celsius in the shade. But these contrasting ecosystems have something in common. They shelter life, and their inhabitants have designed ventilators, condensers, heaters, and antifreezes, which in turn have inspired human inventions on several occasions. The Namib Desert, the first desert on Earth. It's difficult to imagine how any animal has chosen this place for its home. At certain times of the day, the temperature of the sand reaches the boiling point of water. And during the day, it's very dangerous to move around in this land. Exposure time to the sun is very critical. An error in calculation of just a few seconds can literally mean death. Without water or shade, and with barely any vegetation, this extreme landscape is not a place where you'll find many living beings. Or maybe you will. In a convertible, we enjoy a cool breeze thanks to speed, and these beetles find the best environment to refresh themselves with speed as well. It's not a coincidence that the fastest beetles in the world are found in this region. But not all the fauna travel through the dunes as fast. Others take things a bit slower. The oryx is a master at controlling its temperature and at saving liquids. Regarding the water it needs, the oryx normally extracts it by chewing on the few plants that survive here. Water as such is almost never available. Some years it doesn't rain at all. This year, the summer storms have given everyone a break. The rains have been a true luxury for the inhabitants. To keep its body from overheating, the oryx has a very thick coat of hair that insulates it from the outside, while its light color reflects the rays of sunlight. But there's still more to tell. Some mammals have developed the method of sweating to cool themselves. The sweat emerges onto the skin surface, and as it evaporates, the blood that circulates below the skin is cooled off. Just like drinking canteens covered with cloth, which we wet so that the water inside remains cool. This system can also help the oryx. Nonetheless, there's a problem. Sweating means losing large amounts of liquids, and liquids are not abundant in these areas. That's why the oryx, before sweating, sometimes prefers to let its body temperature rise 10 degrees Celsius above normal. Although this would be lethal for any other mammal, it doesn't affect the oryx's brain, thanks to the fact that the oryx amazingly ventilates its blood in its nose before it reaches the head. Just like the water in the radiator cools a car's motor. This surprising antelope can also act as a storage heater. It stores solar radiation during the day in order to consume it when the temperatures drop during the cold nights on the desert. This mechanism is very similar to what we use in our modern heating and lighting systems. It's all about taking advantage of solar energy by storing it for later use when needed.
This beetle can also vary its body temperature, but for him, sweating is not an option. Its cuticle contains a pigment called melanin, which aside from giving him his black color, makes him completely impermeable. Thus it loses no water whatsoever. But this is still not enough, since the beetle must get water first. To do so, it climbs the dunes in search of a drink. And sometimes, magically, he gets one. The Nami borders on the Atlantic, and the ocean regularly leaves a gift behind in the morning, the mist from the sea. The water from the fog liquefies on its shell, since its body is still colder than the morning air. Like in the bathroom mirror after a hot shower, the drops of water run down its back and are channeled by special marks on the skin that carry the water to its mouth. This minuscule pocket condenser is able to absorb the environment's humidity. It literally squeezes the desert to the point that it makes the most of its life. Anyone who has observed the behavior of this insect could build a solar distiller to extract water and avoid dying of thirst in an emergency. Most of the machines designed by man to control water vapor are based on the same physical principle that the desert beetles are familiar with. Water in a gaseous state liquefies upon contact with a body that is colder than the air and condenses into drops on its surface. In any case, for man to cover all his liquid needs starting from just air is still considered science fiction. It's been hours since the sun rose and the sea mist has passed. The sun has been working hard and now the sand is literally burning hot. You'd have to be crazy to walk barefoot across it, or at least have good balance. This lizard of the Merolis genus has got it straight. If the heat surprises you while lying in wait for your prey, you have no other option but to exercise so that your feet don't get burned. But the prey doesn't appear, and the sand lizard seems to be on pins and needles. Today, the desert wins the game. The reptile gives up. Just a few centimeters below the sand, the temperature drops to a bearable level. After 11 o'clock in the morning, the sun leaves the desert's inhabitants with only one option. They must disappear from the surface. The earth acts as an insulator. It doesn't conduct heat, but maintains a stable, cool temperature for those who seek refuge inside. This is the wine cellar effect. There's a lack of light, but plenty of peace and quiet. Although burying oneself is a simple and excellent idea, obviously not everyone is cut out for it. In the Kalahari Desert, the sun works just as hard as in the Nami. That's why the animals here have also been forced to develop various techniques in order to withstand the stifling heat. The African elephant has ears that are clearly too big for its hearing needs. And although it's true that everything about the elephant is exaggerated, what do these huge lobes do? It's simple, they're fans. The elephant's ears are irrigated by dozens of capillaries filled with hot blood. When it moves these enormous panels, the animal ventilates its blood, thereby lowering its temperature. Then, as it travels towards the heart, the warm blood refrigerates the animal's body. And so the legend is debunked. When the elephant flaps its ears, it's not trying to fly. It's simply trying to cool off. Curiously enough, the animals that seem to be the smartest have not bothered to design such techniques. Experience has taught them that the heat is more bearable in a shady place. 
Therefore, in order to avoid being fried by the sun, they just look for something that will provide some shade. At midday, when the temperatures reach their daily peak, the difference in temperature between the shade and the sunlight is the line between life and death. But there are places where nothing produces shade. The burning plains of southern Africa are the preferred habitat for a fascinating land squirrel. It uses its tail as a tripod so that it can stand up to observe the plains. Although this may be an ingenious idea, however, its thick tail fulfills a much more important role, protecting the squirrel from sunstroke. The temperatures recorded here would be unbearable without this mobile canopy. The squirrel knows how to orient its tail perfectly in relation to the sun's position. In this way, it can search for food when the heat is strongest. The squirrel can keep active, while the predators are forced to seek shelter from the rays of sunlight. The parasol that the squirrel has invented is not for mere comfort. It's its most important extremity. This parasol may seem like a luxury, but it really isn't. At certain latitudes, the squirrel can only survive below its parasol. Latitudes at which leaving its protected environment means sure death in just a few minutes. And there's no better way to see for yourself than a stroll in the desert sun. Spending a day here without shade would be a dangerous game. A deadly game, in fact. The difference in temperature can be astounding. When the thermometer reaches 40 degrees Celsius in the shade, out in the open sun, the temperatures are over 70. The importance of this tail is quite obvious then. And yet by moving it up and down, it can also be used as an alarm against the presence of predators. It's a magnificent multi-purpose tool that saves its life once again. Living beings in other areas of the planet have been searching for solutions to fight the cold for millions of years. When the cold only lasts a few months a year, some animals emigrate towards warmer regions and others plunge into a long, deep sleep that allows them to save energy. But many animals stay active, and these are the ones that have designed all kinds of insulation. Radiators, heaters, and antifreezes in order to fight the low temperatures. This short, fat rodent is a lemming. It barely has a tail, nor does it need one. Here it would only make it lose heat, and in this place, no one has calories to spare. In northern Canada, where snow is present throughout most of the year, the insulating capacity of its hair enables the lemming to survive. The heat that the lemming's body gives off is retained between the hairs, creating a layer that protects it from the icy outside air. For that reason, man has used many mammal furs to protect himself from the cold. But perhaps the most important thing is the ball shape that these animals adopt to absorb the sunlight. The sphere, due to its ratio of surface to volume, is the geometric form that offers the highest insulation index. This means that a chubby animal loses less heat than a slender and elongated one. Some camping tents are designed with forms similar to igloos, and that's because they lose less heat than traditional tents. Or at least that's what they say.
Many birds use a similar technique. They puff up their feathers in order to retain warm air that insulates them from the cold. The lower the temperature, the more they fluff up their feathers, to the point that they look like feather balls. But some birds, especially wading birds, always have some part of their body exposed. When their feet come into contact with the icy ground or water, they become excessively cold. The blood that circulates through their feet also passes through the rest of their body, which is a serious problem. Just like mammals, birds need to maintain a constant body temperature. The solution they have chosen is to regulate the blood that flows through their feet. They contract or dilate their veins and arteries. In that way, when it's cold, most of their blood remains in their body, while the blood flow to their feet is reduced to a minimum. The heating system in a modern home works under the same precepts. We can open or close the valves so that the hot water passes through the parts of the house that we want to heat. We have seen how some animals devise special methods to keep warm throughout their adult life. And yet from the moment some embryos are conceived, they need heat in order to survive. Birds that are conscious of the need to keep their young warm do not hesitate to stay on top of their laid eggs and baby chicks for hours at a time. The true expert at maintaining a family, however, is this turkey from the warm forests of Australia. A few weeks before the breeding period, it began to build this gigantic nest out of bits of plants and soil. Once finished, it seduced a female and convinced her to lay her eggs inside this curious creation. He was not able, however, to convince her to sit on the eggs. In reality, it wasn't necessary, thanks to the design of this ingenious incubator nest. Furthermore, these turkeys act as living thermometers. They're able to measure the temperature of the interior where the eggs are kept just by putting their head close. Then, by adding or removing nesting material, the turkey maintains a constant temperature of 33 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature necessary for the proper growth of its offspring. The heat given off by the rest of the plants in the nest as they decompose allows life to mature within each shell. The energy flows from the plant to the animal in a surprising process. This turkey ecology is the basis for the construction of our modern compost plants. The plant remains ferment, producing gas and heat, which is then transformed into electric energy. Without a doubt, the best energy-saving systems were patented by animals. The sun is an inexhaustible heater for the Earth's flora and fauna. Millions of calories sail towards the Earth, where plants and animals are very aware of its strength. Now these frogs are taking in the sun on the banks of the rivers like tourists on a Mediterranean beach. But the sun doesn't warm this land all year round. Before the first freeze, the frogs look for some shelter where they can protect themselves until the next warm season. The weather has changed, and now the conditions outside are extremely bad. The temperatures fall below zero degrees Celsius. The amphibian's small body activates a mechanism to keep from freezing to death. Its liver produces sugars that the frog accumulates inside its cells. 
These substances control the water in the frog's body so that it doesn't freeze to death. The trick is the same one we use to keep containers full of liquid from bursting due to the cold. However, the antifreezes that we use in our cars, for example, are much simpler. Certain frogs have shown that they know the key to the breeding genesis, coexisting with the ice inside their body. Their permeable skin leaves them no other choice. They have designed specific proteins that limit the formation of ice crystals, which allows them to live without oxygen and keeps their cells from bursting. What's most surprising and encouraging is that these frogs have opened the doors to scientists for the future freezing and maintenance of the organs used in transplants. Once again, what's a mystery for man has no secrets for animals. The most sophisticated method of temperature control, one we could describe as an authentic air conditioner, is found on the plains of Africa. This strange mound is home to millions of termites. Without blueprints, they build giant structures up to 15 meters in height, equipped with bedrooms, nurseries, storage areas, and gardens. And throughout all these halls, the temperature is kept stable in spite of the stifling heat outside. Inside this tower, every time a termite breathes, the air conditioning system is turned on. The water vapor produced by the breathing of the entire colony condenses on the walls and trickles down to the basement. Here, the wet ground is used for the continuous enlarging and remodeling of the termite nest. At this level, the air penetrates through the lateral galleries and starting in the basement, the water evaporates to cool off the entire structure. In the end, the wet air exits through the central chimney which provides the necessary airflow for the air conditioner to work properly. The termite's mechanism for temperature control is perhaps the most perfect one created by any animal. As we have seen, each species evolves in terms of its necessities and possibilities, controlling the cold or the heat and searching for ways to save resources and energy. Something that we haven't learned to copy completely and something that continues to be an exclusively animal patent. <laughs>